From LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Keith Farmer. And I'm Maggie Davis. And tonight we'll preview the next matchup for UK basketball and look back to the Tennessee loss if we have to. Mm, we have to, yeah. All right, plus the <laughs> Super Bowl brought some big news for former Cap Mike Edwards and gave the Kentucky football program the perfect moment to reach out to Big Blue Nation. But we have to begin with something that was breaking news as we began taping today. Jamal Singleton, who had just come aboard as the UK football running backs coach and special teams coordinator, has apparently agreed to join the Philadelphia Eagles instead. That was first reported by Matt Jones, later confirmed by Justin Rowland of Cats Illustrated. Keith, he's only been here a month, but he was undefeated. Burp, burp, burp. <laughs> the stakes. I was so looking forward to being around. He was so much fun to talk to, and, and I felt like he was going to be a great addition mm -hmm. for the, the running backs because, you know, they could see the NFL on the horizon. He knew what it took to get there. I get it. I get it. He's going to be the assistant head coach as well with the Eagles. So, I mean, I kind of get the move if that's what has to happen. It's a good gig. Good luck to him. I know. We'll we hardly him. knew him. One month, that's all. <laughs> yeah. All right, the Kentucky men's basketball team will return to action tomorrow night following a disappointing weekend. That is tonight's Big Blue Story presented by Baptist Health. The Cats will come into their latest SEC matchup with Arkansas having won five total games this season with a 4-6 and six conference record. Meanwhile, the Hogs are 14 and 5 overall, 6 and 4 in the SEC. Here's what UK assistant coach Joel Justice says the team needs to do to get a win tomorrow. When there is a little bit of adversity and we have to kind of continue to work with them on relying on each other, you know, when there's adversity. You know, if if a team goes on a run, you know, we can't then worry about okay, this is my man can't score or, or I have to go make a play. You know, that's when that's when you really have to rely on each other. Uh, so that's, that's something that we've talked about and we'll continue to talk about. Um, and we, like I said, we just need a little bit of that breakthrough. We need a little bit of luck. We need a little bit of everything to, to kind of break through at this point. Yeah, Maggie, uh, Joel said even, you know, he's not seeing anything disturbing from the team. They seem to still be all in. They're still trying to get better. So that's good news there. It is. And this game, I think, again, we just saw little mistakes that added mm. up. Yeah. This, this team really lost the Tennessee game two points at a time. That sounds really <laughs> simple, but it was they missed one stop. They had one bad turnover, and it just combined into a bad stretch. Yeah. They gave this one to the Volunteers. Yeah. That's, I think, why it hurt so much. It didn't come down to the final four minutes. It was more like the final ten minutes where it just kind of kept falling apart. Yeah. So let's recap it now. The Cats match up with Tennessee mm. on Saturday night. Early on, things seemed to be moving in Kentucky's direction. The Vols couldn't stay out of foul trouble, which opened things up for UK offensively, especially in the paint. For the second straight game, Keon Brooks led the way for the Wildcats. A career-high 23 points and 11 boards for him. That was his first career double-double, Keith. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Kentucky led 42-34 to 34 at halftime. And in the second half, the offense continued to flourish until it didn't for a long stretch. And that's when Tennessee went on a 12-zip run. And in the last 12 minutes, you mentioned it, <laughs> Kentucky made just four buckets. They were outscored 34-13 to 13 in that time period. And Kentucky fails to close out another one. 82-71 to 71 was the final. There is some type of, of value in it going forward, you know, to have that, you know, experience to not want to feel this way again or, you know, you could teach future teammates or future teams, you know, this is what this team went through and, you know, do everything we can to not let that happen again. But for the most part, you know, losing sucks. Disappointing. I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't know what to tell you at this point. We, uh, we're we playing good enough to win, and then we hit a stretch where we don't score a basket. Um, our guards didn't shoot it well, I know, and but they still passed up open looks that led to turnovers or bad shots. Keith, that's the problem that we've seen all season, and at this point, it's February. Mm -hmm. How do you fix that? I still don't understand why someone won't take an open shot. Uh, I mean, most of the time you got to tell them not to take the open right, shot or, right. or, you know, not to take too many shots or not to take the one when people are in your face. But when they're open, it's an know. unusual problem to it's have. It's totally strange. I just like it. Cal. I, I don't know what to say anymore. Coach Cal also addressed the lack of playing time for Isaiah Jackson, who finished the Tennessee game with just 12 minutes. Cal says the UK big man was not playing well in the first half, and he decided to go with Keon Brooks instead. Uh, Maggie, this seems to be happening a little bit this season. It feels like 
you know, Dante sits for too long. Isaiah sits for too long. I, I don't know, I guess maybe it's just trying to find that, find that right combination. It's all about finding the right combination, and, and I'm not saying that Isaiah Jackson could have changed this game, but when you look at the stats, Kentucky was outscored 44 mm. to 30 in the paint, 17 to six in second chance points, six to four blocks. Like I said, Isaiah Jackson wasn't necessarily the one who could have just flipped those numbers all on his yeah. own. Yeah. But when he's your best rim protector, he's one of your best guys down low in terms of rebounding and second chance points. It is kind of strange that he had such limited minutes with only two fouls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was looking forward to that Pons and Jackson matchup too. I know, I know. <laughs> Deep breath. We'll turn to football now because Super Bowl Sunday was super mm -hmm. for former cat Mike Edwards. The Tampa Bay safety capped off his second pro season with an appearance in the big game and he made a key play in the third quarter. The Honey Badger got his hands on a Patrick Mahomes pass and managed to tip it just enough to create an interception for his teammate. You all know by now the final result, another championship for Tom Brady and the new team in Tampa over the Kansas City Chiefs. We don't really care about that. We only care about Mike Edwards, right? Yeah, I loved it. I love seeing him getting involved. I desperately wanted to see him make an interception, but the fact that he helped create one made it a lot of fun just to, to see him get out there and, and, and perform so well. All right, the number 19 Kentucky men's tennis team is off to a 9-0 start this season. The latest victories came, yes, against Duke yesterday. That's Love always that. a good thing, right? And on <laughs> Friday over Virginia Tech, Cats are set for their first neutral court test in a huge matchup against number one USC on Wednesday. And the UK women are also undefeated on the tennis court. For the first time since 2009, the team wrapped up their non-conference schedule without dropping a dual match. They defeated mm. Notre Dame in a 6-1 decision on Saturday. And the Wildcats improved to 8-0 with the win. Good for their best start since 2009. And we'll end this with the Kentucky track and field. Junior Abby Steiner won three events, including a new best time for her 200-meter dash. It's fastest in the nation right now as the number 12 women's team won five events. And the number 22 men claimed their uh, two victories at South Carolina Invitational on Saturday. Coming up next on BBN Tonight, we're going to return to yesterday's Super Bowl Sunday. The Kentucky football program released not just one, but a series of Super Bowl ads on social media last night. We'll do a little deep dive for you when we return. <laughs> 